What's up everybody, B Cube here. This is the Impact Lounge. As always, first timers, please hit that subscribe button. So big update coming out regarding the broken gimmick, the Hardys anthem. It seems like Ed Norholm is finally gonna release the gimmick to the Hardys. I don't know how much life that gimmick has in it personally, but I do think that this is probably both best for both sides, especially for Impact. It's probably something they should have just let happen from the beginning. I totally agree why they did it, and I actually um, supported Anthem in that decision for a very long time. But we also discuss all the time about Impact Wrestling's image and Anthem's image. And in their case, it was probably something they needed to let happen. I am under the belief, and I think a lot of the um, Impact fans are who were with the broken gimmick from day one, not the ones who, you know, when it got popular, decided to hop on the train, hop on the bandwagon, you know what I mean? But for those of us who were there from day one with this gimmick, what we know with this gimmick is that there was a storytelling process over the course of two to three months before he became broken. And it actually went back. You can even take it even back further when, you know, they won the tag titles and Jeff got hurt and everything. So there was a long storytelling process to this. And if you guys remember, you know, they tried to redo the final deletion on Raw um, with, with the uh, New Day and the Wyatts. And I did watch it. I thought it was very well done. But all it was was just a match, like or just a fight. Like they weren't able to cap capture that same magic because... They didn't incorporate the storytelling into it. They just went into the match. So that's my whole thing with the gimmick. I'm sure they can do some wonderful things with it there. But if they're just to, if they just decide to just use the gimmick out of the blue, I think it's going to really do a disservice to it. Hopefully they build up some kind of storyline and make it happen. But I don't think that they have the same patience that Impact TNA did a couple years ago where you know they built up two to three months up to it. I don't really see that, so I don't think um, it's gonna be as good. But, you know, good news that it's just happening, and you know, hopefully everyone can just move past this. Hopefully we can just be done with the Rebby stuff, you know, done with, with all that. Because it's, it's, it's just good for that positive light to be out there for impact. So Ed Norholm released a statement to uh, Sports Illustrated, we've seen the character development and we'll be interested to see where they take the concept. And here's something interesting. Our new talent agreements all incorporate language that allow talent to continue to use their impact persona after they leave the company. We are working with our legal team to amend our existing agreements to extend this to all of our current and former talent. So this is not something that they have to do. Lord knows WWE would not do this the other way around. But... I think that's kind of big. That's crazy that they're doing that, actually. So, you know, in really simple terms, if Laurel Van Ness wanted to take her crazy gimmick to another company one day, or shit, even EC3, if he still want to be Ethan Carter the third, even though it's you know Dixie's nephew, he could probably do that. So, you know, maybe this is just the start of something new and a new direction for the company, and um, you know, maybe they're they're just they're trying to have better relationships with the talent because oftentimes we see talent leave the company and they start speaking bad about the company and that's what made this year so difficult to induct someone into the hall of fame because it was initially going to be jerry jarrett that obviously all fell through with everything that happened mike Tanay was the backup that was unable to work and they have have so many negative relationships with people of their past that it actually hurts the hall of fame process and say what you want about the Hall of Fame, but any company in this world, whether it's Walmart, McDonald's, a wrestling company, to, to appreciate accomplishments and to recognize those accomplishments is a big deal. It doesn't matter what you think about them having a Hall of Fame or not. To recognize someone's accomplishments is a very big deal. So I want to know what you guys think about this whole thing. Um, obviously, I was always very pro-impact, pro-anthem through this whole thing. And again, I don't think this gimmick is going to be over there what it was in TNA. It, it's just not. It's one of those gimmicks that kind of worked with a smaller, more... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We'll just say a smaller, intimate, more, uh, more intimate audience, audience is what I was getting at. So another thing with the broken gimmick, though... And this is something that it, it's going to lose its magic if they forget this. 
a lot of what happened was not the in-ring work. Because the one thing that I kind of criticized Matt was as he didn't switch his in-ring style. So like in comparison when Cody Rhodes became Stardust, like he changed his in-ring style and the moves and the moveset changed. Matt didn't do that. He's always been doing the same stuff. And I think that was the one thing that um, hurt it in the ring. So when it came to the broken gimmick, you wanted to see the backstage stuff, the stuff at the Hardy compound. That's what you wanted to see. You didn't want to see them wrestle. Because they weren't doing anything different. You know, my Matt was like biting people or whatever. But so it's going to be interesting and we'll see what happens going forward. I'm not going to follow it um, from a, a viewer standpoint, but, you know, definitely through social media and uh, wrestling media and everything, I'll, I'll definitely keep an eye on it. I'll be interested to see. But, you know, again, if, the, if they try to put them in the ring too much, like cutting promos and make it about the in ring work and, you know, try to get too crazy with it and not have a storytelling. It's it's gonna go really really bad, and um, we'll we'll just see. I don't know, but I want to know in the comments what you guys think about this finally happening. Happening. Um, again, I I was not on the Hardy side in this whole thing. That was that was me personally. Um, I'm always gonna be uh, an M Impact guy, and it was mainly the actions of Rebby and everything that you know caused me to really side with Anthem 100% through the whole thing, but. I think it's really good with both sides. I hope they can move forward in a positive direction. This is big for impact and restructuring talent contracts. I think that's going to help them with signing new talent as well. So that if someone comes and they catch fire with something, they're able, they feel comfortable that if they move on one day, they can take that with them instead of, you know, hypothetically starting over with something new. So let me know in the comments if you made it all the way to this point of the video. Congratulations. Thank you. Please hit the subscribe button and uh, we will keep you updated as things unfold with all of this. Thanks for swinging by. Peace.